Hello and welcome back to the NBA DFS Slate Breakdown for Tuesday, January 30th. We got a five-game slate on tap. Uh, it's an interesting one. There's a ton of news out there that we are still waiting on. So uh, understand that when you're listening to this. There's a lot of variability in uh, some of these picks. We're going to try and touch on that as much as we can throughout the show. But before we do, as always, come join us at Vinestar. $39.99 per month gets you access to everything we do. All the props, all the DFS. You get it all. One low price. Lowest price. Most value in the industry. Let's go. All right. <clears throat> as I said, five games. Uh, almost every single game has some sort of injury news to go over. Uh, so I think we should probably just start there and try and run through it as quick as we can. Pacers looks like uh, Halliburton's going to be coming back. McConnell is out, but Turner, Matherin, and Jalen Smith all questionable. Celtics they got big man problems. Uh, How Horford's out. Porzingis is questionable. Cornette doubtful. Knicks obviously Julius Randle is out, but then Ananobi is questionable. Uh, he did sit out last night, so not too sure what's going to go on there. The Lakers, AD is out. So that changes up stuff uh, from the big man perspective quite a bit. And uh, DeHonte Murray is questionable, and he missed the last game as well. I, uh, yeah, just wanted to double check that one. And then with Toronto Raptors, quickly is doubtful. Barrett is out. Podol's questionable, so a lot can change there. Bulls are still with Levine. Now also have Patrick Williams out. And then we don't know what's going on with the 76ers. They are, we're still waiting for their uh, injury report. Melton's out, but Maxi and Embiid both likely questionable or some sort of injury de designation, which we're not too sure what their situation is right now. And unfortunately, that is a 7 o'clock game, so we might not know too much at lock. And there's going to be, you know, some big, uh, big things to kind of consider there if any of those guys are out. So let's get into it real quick. Uh, point guard, highest own, Jalen Brunson. Look, there's no Randall, so his usage is going to be through the roof. I do think he's kind of expensive, though. I'm not getting to a ton of them. I'm getting way more D'Angelo Russell, who first game without AD, so... It's a definitely interesting spot. I think D'Angelo Russell and Austin Reeves get the biggest bump up without Anthony Davis. So I'm in super intrigued with both of them. And Russell's been playing well. Kobe White still been playing very good. No Lamine, so helps them. And then also no Emmanuel Quickly. Quickly is a very good defensive point guard. So I don't mind attacking with White. Then Pip <clears throat> we got Dennis Schroeder. Schroeder's played 28, 29 minutes. I'd expect him to play right around the same. Uh, without all their guys, the usage is just going to go up, and it's not a bad spot, so don't mind attacking that one. And then if Maxi does play, I am intrigued. Now, he's been out two games. Uh, Embiid was also out last game, so we really don't know what's going to happen here. Um, but I think Maxi is interesting if he's going to play. And if he is, I would expect him to play a lot. He uh, generally plays, you know, 38-ish minutes a game. Um, but who knows what happens here. But I do, I am fairly intrigued on Maxi. Just make sure that he is playing, you know, his full allotment of, game, of minutes. Uh, if any news comes out there, you know, kind of pay attention to it. All right. Now on DK... Brunson, Randall, Reeves are the high-owned uh, point guards. I like them all. Can't really say anything bad about them. Reeves is way too low-priced without uh, AD. And then Russell, I think, is still too low-priced as well. And then on to the matchups we uh, got for point guard here. Uh, Drew Holiday with the best matchup. Uh, now Halliburton is coming back and with Halliburton, this Pacers team is much better against point guards. So I don't, wouldn't fully, you know, uh, look into that. 
I do think it is a little bit tougher of a matchup for uh, the Pacers. Over the last 10 games, it looks good, but Halliburton's been out for some of it. Kobe White's in a good spot. Russell's in a good spot. Brunson's in a fine spot. Now let's get over to shooting guards. So our high-owned, uh, we got Dante DiVincenzo, D'Angelo Russell, Alex uh, Caruso, and Reeves is pretty much the same ownership as Caruso. So DiVincenzo, he played 42 minutes last game. Now we have him at 35 right now, but if OB, OG and an OB plays, I think he's going to be more around 32. It's not a situation they've really let him go crazy with minutes. Unless everybody's out, which happened last game, I just don't foresee that happening again. He is also on a back-to-back, -back and playing that kind of minutes two nights in a row is pretty difficult to do. So I don't love the spot for Dante. I think his price is a little bit too high. Love Russell. Uh, I'm okay going with Caruso. He can get there. The problem is that he needs those steals and blocks. So two, four steals and blocks. Uh, when he went for over 40, five steals and blocks. That's pretty much the way that he gets into that upper 30s, low 40s area is steals and blocks. Now, could it happen? Yeah, the Raptors are beat up. They're missing, missing some ball handlers. Could raise their, uh, you know, floor and how many turnovers they have. But I don't love the spot. I think 6.2K is just a lot for him. Uh, Brandon Padinsky, I'm a little bit intrigued. I don't think 5.4K is too much. He played 28 minutes the other night. He has a solid ceiling when, you know, he's shooting well. They let him play more. And I think he's in a good spot against that 76 or second unit. Uh, OG Ananobi, I do like if he plays. It's a big if. We really have no idea right now. Um, he is questionable. But it was, they ruled him out late on uh, Monday so I'm not totally sure what uh, the situation is here you know if he plays or if he doesn't but a lot can change with the Knicks team without Anobi just because they're already beat up they're already without Randall if they're without him too a lot of usage is going to be up in the air but uh, he does intrigue me if he plays shooting guard on DraftKings DiVincenzo Grimes Reeves uh Checking in on Grimes. Grimes played 32 minutes, did absolutely nothing last game. But if uh, Anobi's out, he's going to play a lot of minutes again. So you got to consider him, especially at how cheap he is. Reeves, I absolutely love. Get, would have a ton of him uh, today, especially on DraftKings at 5,900. think that's way too cheap. Uh, don't mind AO either. Now, matchup spot. Shooting guard, DeHonte Murray, who is questionable. Understand that if he is out, Trey Young looks much better. And uh, Lakers aren't great versus point guard to begin with. Buddy Heald and Dante DiVincenzo. Over to small forward, we got Dante, Josh Hart, uh, DeMar DeRozan, and Rui. Austin Reeves right there as well, ownership-wise. But uh, Josh Hart, look, he's going to probably start with Randall out. Anobi slides over to the four. If uh, Anobi's out, Achua starts at the four. But Josh Hart's going to play a lot of minutes. Do not mind him. He puts up a lot of rebounds, assists, can put up some points if he gets hot from three. I don't mind going there. Uh, the pivots. Oh, DeMar. I, I've said it for, I would say, months now. This 8K, DeMar is too cheap. Not getting to a ton of them today. I think this is a little bit of a tough matchup, but I mean, 8K for a guy that can put up 50 with some regularity is just cheap. Austin Reeves, 6.5K, way too cheap, all over it. Uh, Jason Tatum is an interesting pivot, I think, that not many people are going to. He is 10K. If Porzingis is out, he's going to get some more boards. Also against this Pacers team, it isn't terrific uh, versus power forward. Now, they are probably significantly better with Siakam, but uh, still don't mind it. Pace up spot, 42-45 total. Uh, the huge ceiling that he has makes him interesting. And Bruce Brown play, has played a ton of minutes the last two games. 
would expect that to continue and at 5.9k it's definitely interesting and my boy scotty b like 9k hits 60 regularly in a decent spot uh, i think you can definitely go to scotty barnes in the spot today small forward on dk divincenzo grimes hart talked about them all and the matchups we got bump to chio which at 4.3k is still too cheap for the minutes that he's playing and how he's been playing lately don't mind this spot i don't love it uh but there is a little bit of ceiling you know he can hit 30 he's done it multiple times at 4.3k that's you know enough to get you uh 7x so don't mind going there whatsoever uh caruso is a little bit expensive naismith uh pacers do have some injuries if there's a little bit more there and we can expect uh naismith to play those you know 30 34 minutes then he's very intriguing once again on to power forward josh hart christian wood jackson hayes uh draymond Rui, all the highest owned guys here talked about Hart. now this laker big men thing is one we have to talk about so there's wood vanderbilt hayes any of them could start at the center spot and i think hayes if he starts he is the most attractive just because he's by far the cheapest uh my issue with wood if wood starts is which i don't expect him to he Oh, I thought he did start a game or two, but it doesn't look like we have him as starting. Um, what I was going to say with Wood in general is just they haven't been giving him many minutes. So even if he does start, I wouldn't expect many minutes with him. And that's that's my worry. He's 5K. Uh, very good per minute fantasy scorer, but I just don't think he'll get the real run um, that we would need. And at higher ownership, you know, don't love it. Jackson Hayes, I very well think could start. Played 20 minutes last time he started, 22 points. Uh, 21, you know, they also haven't let him get a ton of minutes. But I think realistically, all three of those guys are going to be used a little bit in the center spot. And I'm fine with rolling out uh, any of them. I, I think it is a spot where one of them can go. I would just be wary of having too many of those guys because it is likely that, you know, max two of the three are on the court at the same time. And even that, it's not going to be that much uh, overlap on their minutes. So I don't love playing those guys with another one. I kind of try and do just one of the three in lineups. Um, so Hayes, I do like Tatum. I like Barnes. I like, and we've gone over all of those. So we'll go over to power forward on DraftKings. We got Draymond Green, Josh Hart, and Kuminga. Kuminga has been balling. Uh, no problem going back to him. I think it's a good spot, but the last week been playing around 30 ish minutes has he's living in the forties. I think you can absolutely go back there at 5.8 K. And matchups, we got Scotty B at the very top, Batum and DeRozan with Anobi shortly after. Uh, Barnes is definitely my favorite on the matchup tool there. And on to center at FanDuel, Christian Wood, Nikola Vucevic, Jackson Hayes, Draymond Green. We didn't talk to Draymond too much about power forward, so I should touch on it. Look, he's been playing decent minutes. Um, we have him as starting right now. I just don't think that's going to happen if Embiid is in. If Embiid is out, then I think Draymond does start. But uh, I think he likely comes off the bench if uh, if Embiid is in, just because Embiid's size. Draymond can't deal with that kind of size. Um, and I would expect Looney to play to start, but only play 18, 20 minutes, and Draymond would get a lot of the other minutes. Don't mind Draymond, just don't hate just kind of meh on him i think he's priced accordingly he could get there hard to really tell right there the spots that i do like clint capella quite a bit i think him going against the lakers with no ad is very intriguing 
He played 28 minutes uh, a couple nights ago. If he gets to that 28 minutes, he's going to crush. I know most likely he's more like 26, but uh, he's in a good spot. He can put up points quickly. Do not mind going there whatsoever. And then also Miles Turner. Miles Turner has been pretty interesting with uh, Siakam. He did sit out last game. Uh, he is questionable now, so we need to watch the injury report. But uh, I'm definitely intrigued by going with Turner. Him and Siakam seems like it's a pretty good uh, pair down there. And, you know, he's done well with uh, Siakam there, so don't mind going back. Into center on DraftKings, Wood, Draymond Green, and Vucevic. I don't mind going to Vucevic. I just don't love it versus the Raptors. I. Uh, but it does depend if Podol's in or out. If Podol's out, I like it quite a bit. I don't think they have anybody that can slow down Booch if that's the case. And matchup column, uh, Isaiah Hartenstein on the top of it. One of the things I have to say here is it's expected that he's limited. He only played 16 minutes last game. I think he maxes probably 22, 23 minutes. And, you know, you just can't get there for that. So kind of throw out that uh, he's in a good matchup because it doesn't matter. I do think Porzingis is pretty interesting if he plays. It's a big if, though. Like, I mean, look over the last week. He's played three games, three of six, and really not sure if he's going to play. He only played 20, 21 minutes versus Miami a couple games ago. So really don't know there and understand that if he doesn't go, they're down big men big time, and you're going to go to – say Quintus or uh, Lamar Stevenson likely starting at center there, which they'll be good value. So I don't mind going there, but that'll do it for us today. Uh, quick one. Once again, only five games, not a ton of stuff to go over and just a lot of variables. So make sure you're paying attention to uh, news. Don't overreact to that late news and just kind of stay within yourself and understand kind of the variables like with the Lakers at center there's three guys that could get minutes you know very well with three of them getting minutes there maybe nobody gets there maybe you know one of the two do so it's going to be kind of an interesting situation to play out as it comes and then also understand that last game two hours after <laughs> any other game starts in the slate and there's a lot of injury stuff that could happen in that game that would dramatically change this slate so understand all the all of that it is a tricky one to kind of dissect uh and hopefully some of that news becomes out comes out before lock so you don't have to play that guessing game but if we do have to play that guessing game there will be some edge to be had uh due to it and people just not knowing where to go. All right, guys, that will do it for us today. Have a good one. Good luck. Please comment, like, and subscribe. Peace.